Uh, I'm James from MIMSPIC. Welcome, everybody. Uh, remember when we were here last year, we were talking about what uh, bad times, hard times we're living through, you know, rotten economy, uh, educational funding is being cut, uh, schools are being reorganized here at City College, you know, everybody's worried about their jobs, and the anxiety that that creates in us, the uncertainty and the, the angst that comes with that. Well, we just don't have time for that anymore. We got to keep moving because the world is changing too fast. There's a technology revolution underway, an ICT revolution. The 20th century was a time of huge change based on industrial manufacturing and transportation and oil, cheap energy, unprecedented pace of change. But it was absolutely nothing compared to the 21st century with uh, information, knowledge, and innovation economies. The pace of change is just unprecedented. So this ICT revolution, ICT is just an umbrella term for everything related to computer technologies, software, hardware, networking, et cetera. The superset term, you know, hardware, doesn't do as much without software, software doesn't do anything without hardware, networking is a combination of hardware and software, the internet's a combination of all of that. Because we use an ICT term, that doesn't mean that terms like networking go away, but we need to be able to think about all of this stuff together for policy making, planning, educational system development. We didn't make it up, uh, it's used in the European Union, it's used in uh, the United Nations, it's used pretty much anywhere you go that requires a passport, and it has the advantage of being Googleable. So if you Google IT, you get every article in the English language. You Google ICT, you get the stuff that's actually relevant for you. So we think it's a good term, that's why we've been lining up around it. It's a flat world, we might as well line up on the same thing. So what is this paradigm shift, this ICT revolution? You know, why do we care? <clears throat> Look at the top 20 richest Americans. 35% of them are related to ICT. Call of Duty, Black Ops. Last year we were talking about the other uh, Call of Duty title. Crossed a billion dollars in revenue in 15 days. And that's faster than the 16 days that was required for their previous release. $500 million in 24 hours. Put it in perspective, uh, Lord of the Rings as a trilogy brought in about $3 billion. This, is brought, this franchise has brought in $8.4 billion. Uh, that's almost three times as much of, as Lord of the Rings. It's all ICT. Data. During the next eight years, uh, we'll produce 5.2 terabytes of data for every man, woman, and child on Earth. That's about 57 times the amount of all grains of sand on all the beaches on Earth. Most of that is going to be produced by machines. The price of storage is going to drop from $2 a gigabyte to $0.20. Cents, and Almost two thirds of that is going to be in the in the developing world. Wow, who's going to deal with that? We need people who can handle that kind of thing. Uh, you know, ICT revolution, mobile phones and tablets were 24 percent of online shopping on Black Friday this year. 24 percent smartphones and and uh, tablets. That's mind-blowing. Think about the public infrastructure changes that are uh, in, in queue right now, smarter planet, you know, the smart grid transformation, basically uh, making intelligent networks out of the electrical transmission and distribution systems, smart buildings, having sensors and controls to make buildings work better. Smart transportation, so that transportation systems work better. Smart city services, 
all of those things require ICT knowledge and skills. They're built on ICT. Look at what's happened to music. You know, in the past you had that massive record collection. Uh, required money. You had to buy all these things. You had to store them. You, you, they required face, space. Uh, now, any sort of iGizmo will give you, you know, as much of that as you want. You can either store it on the device or you can stream it from the cloud. And these images are from uh, Mary Meeker of VentureBeat. She's got some great stuff. Video, how that transformed. Anybody have a video collection in the past? Don't need that anymore. You can stream anything you want to see from anywhere, anytime. Um, transportation. In the past, everybody had to own their own car and store it and insure it and all of that. Now you walk out of your door, you have one of these devices. It knows where you are. It knows where a car is. It can get you in that car for, you know, just pushing a button on your phone. Textbooks. You know, in the past, you had to have a whole library. You had to have the space for it. You buy the textbook. Now you can rent them for a semester. Um, any book on an e-reader, you know, you can store all the books in the universe on an e-reader if you want. Uh, the way people spend money. In the past, you had, you know, a wallet full of cash and credit cards and, you know, you carry around boarding passes and all of that. Now this iDevice can handle all of that for you. You can pay with it. Employment. You know, in the past, dedicated staff got to pay all their benefits. Today, you can just shop uh, online and acquire the talent that you need in order to get things done. You don't have to take on that permanent overhead. All of this stuff is driven by ICT. Um, and it, in this new world, uh, there's all sorts of opportunity. If you're smart and if you're flexible and if you understand technology, you can make a killing. ICT itself is changing. You know, in the past, we had all these powerful, dedicated resources, desktops, notebooks. Now it's tablets and smartphones. The user interfaces, uh, you know, keyboards, mice, graphical user interfa interfaces, they're, they're gravitating towards natural user interfaces, touch, gesture, voice. Those changes need talent if we're going to bring them about. This one's really interesting, uh, market share of operating systems. See the big Wintel uh, Windows platform. Uh, almost monopoly for, for a long time. Look in 2011, Android and uh, iOS. So mobile is taking over. It's, uh, it's changing everything. In fact, there was an inflection point in 2010 where global shipments of smartphones and tablets uh, passed those of PCs. And this year, 2013, the embedded base of these devices, this is going to take over. So it's less PCs and laptops and more tablets and mobile devices. This is a profound transformation of the way people do communication and computing. So again, books, you know, knowledge. In the past, you had a library, you know, an entire building in some cases full of books. Now you've got everything at your fingertips uh, through devices like these. Photography used to be a very specialized thing. Uh, somebody had a camera, they had a dark room, they had chemicals, they had special technical knowledge. Now anybody can be a photographer. It's built into the phone. In fact, uh, smartphones with cameras in them uh, are taking over the, the freestanding camera marketplace. Um, navigation and live traffic. You know, in the past you had a physical map in the car and you listened to the news to find out where there was traffic. Now this device has it all embedded. You know, GPS, directions. They'll, t they'll talk to you and tell you where to go. You can find out about traffic because it's reported from other users on the road. 
files and folders. You know, you had to store that stuff in some place physically in the past. Now it's available to anybody anywhere in the cloud. Magazines, piles and piles of those things being shipped around. Now they're available to anyone on any of these devices. Uh, cash transactions in the past, you know, dedicated POS systems in the past. I took a cab the other day. The guy swiped my credit card on his cell phone. So all of these technology transformations require ICT talent. And they're coming faster and faster and faster. The whole way you get jobs. In the past, you would go to a job fair and you'd bring paper resumes. Today, it happens through LinkedIn and uh, other online networked vehicles. Signatures. You know, remember in the past, you have to uh, get the physical document and FedEx it to somebody, or, or the revolution of the fax machine, you could sign a document and fax it. Today, it all just happens electronically. The time to money has accelerated massively. Education is being transformed. In the past, it was, you know, dedicated classrooms, buildings, facilities, lectures, reading materials. Now it's available to anybody through the internet. MOOCs, you'll see at least three topics on that uh, on the agenda here. And the ways that people learn. In the past, sit obediently and learn. Today, it's do something and pick up what you need along the way. You know, two billion Bluetooth devices shipped in 2012. 2 billion Bluetooth devices, 1.5 billion Wi-Fi enabled devices shipped in 2012. That's mind blowing. <clears throat> Look at this one, student debt in the, in the bottom here. 2001, tiny fraction, 2002, absolutely enormous. That's going to put pressure on the way we do education. People can't afford to do that anymore. We've got to change the way that works. But there's some cool things that are happening in the U.S. too. Now, this is the market share for uh, smartphone operating systems. 2005, uh, the U.S. had a tiny piece of that. It was Nokia and Blackberry and others. Now iOS, Android, and Windows Mobile is dominating. Those are, that's U.S. competitiveness through ICT. So this cycle of disruption is faster. Things are moving and changing faster than they ever have in the past. And it's all enabled with ICT. Today, everybody needs to know something about information and communication technologies. If you're a student, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you study. You need to understand this stuff, at least enough to be able to find a school and apply to it, get your assignments, do your research, write your papers, make your presentations in any field. Workers, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter who you work for. You need to be able to work with computers. Uh, you need to be able to communicate with others electronically. Organizations, it doesn't matter what they do. If they're going to compete in a global economy, they've got to be able to work with technology. And society doesn't function without ICT anymore. That's the way government delivers its services. That's the way people find out about how the world works. ICT industries are going gangbusters in California. They're doing absolutely fine. 46,000 companies, 4% of companies in California, 12th of uh, industries by firm count, 172 billion in revenue, 6% of private sector revenues, Six of industries by revenues, a million California workers, 4% of the workforce, 12th of industries by employee count, 76 billion in wages, second um, in terms of private sector industry wages paid, good jobs, they pay twice the median, huge growth. And one of the reasons we like to use ICT strategically is that it gravitates higher in lists of, of industries and jobs. It's a bigger bucket, so it gets more attention from policymakers and planners. 
These are standard two-digit NAICS codes. And the closest thing to ICT today is this information category. But that includes things like newspapers that are experiencing declines. And that can lead to the false impression that, that technology is not performing well. In fact, in terms of wages paid, ICT is second in the state as an industry. So overall, California companies expected 3.8% uh, employment growth over two years when we studied this in 2010. ICT companies expected 8.5% employment growth. Non-ICT companies expected to stay flat. And ICT employment isn't limited to ICT industries. Not everybody gets this, including the Department of Labor. ICT jobs are everywhere. You don't just work for IBM or Apple or Cisco. You work for any company today. You work for Wells Fargo. You work for uh, a biotech firm. You, you work for any firm in any industry. It requires tech talent. You all heard this one. We talked about it last year. All the IT jobs went to China and India. Absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. And we've, we've got to combat that. We need to make the case that that's untrue. Here's a slide from IBM. In this decade, the US, Europe, Japan, China, and India will face a shortfall of 32 million tech professionals. The US needs a million and a half additional skilled IT professionals by 2013. This is huge demand, absolute huge demand. And yet, the pipeline is shrinking. Uh, the number of students enrolling in science and engineering is declining. Uh, women's interest in computer science has fallen off 80% since 1998. This is going in precisely the wrong direction. We need to communicate better. We need to be attracting people into these jobs because these are the jobs that exist where people thrive today and in the future. These are jobs that IBM pays attention to. Just look at the graphs. Up, 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 up. Increasing demand. Uh, agile developers. So we're short five to one on, on people who can do agile development. Ron's going to talk about that in his session. Here's a report that came out last month, um, Barrier Council. Since the dot-com bust, Employment growth in the high-tech sector has outpaced growth in the private sector as a whole by a ratio of 3 to 1. Tech jobs are outperforming non-tech jobs 3 to 1. Unemployment rate for tech jobs is way below other jobs. Employment growth in STEM occupations outpacing job gains of all occupations by a ratio of 27 to 1. 27 to 1. This is where the jobs are. Very low unemployment, high demand, high wages. Wage premium for STEM occupations is between 17 and 27 percent relative to workers in other fields. Remember how supply and demand works. There's more demand than there is supply. And this is an important uh, factor for economic growth. Tech jobs have the highest multiplier effect on the economy of, of any kind of job. So one tech job in, in a local economy produces 4.3 additional jobs in the local goods and service economy. That's three times the multiplier effect for manufacturing. So employers are trying to create these jobs. When you create one of these jobs, you create 4.3 other jobs. We need to be delivering these jobs in order to pull this economy ahead. On, on a graph, just to make it real easy, STEM occupations, employment change, way up. Other occupations, down. Unemployment in STEM, very low. Unemployment in other occupations, very high. OK, and so STEM, that's a little broad science, technology, engineering, and math. So this tech workforce that they're talking about in this study 
uh, employment in the computer and math sciences subgroup has grown 8% versus un, uh, employment falling 5% overall. Okay, that's good. But the 635,000 STEM jobs they're talking about, 79.8% of them are computer and math science occupations. This is where the jobs are. This is where the jobs are. In the U.S. when we did our study, 5% of private sector jobs in 2008, 1 in 20 jobs in the country were already ICT. Huge growth, high wages. In California, same thing, 1 in 20 jobs. Um, they pay twice the median, 46,000 new jobs a year. 80% of companies we talk to agree or strongly agree ICT is important to the productivity of their organization. Um, so the ICT companies uh, expected 8.5% employment growth over the next two years. They expect 11.2% growth in their ICT workforce, those people with the technical job roles. The non-ICT companies that expected flat employment over two years, they still expected 3.7% growth in their ICT workforce. That's where the jobs are. Robert Haas, uh, salary guide for 2013 for the, for the tech professions. Administration, applications development, consulting and systems integration, good solid salaries. All up, every single one of them is going up. In addition to these solid salaries, if you have other technical skills, you can bump up your wages. Supply and demand, right? Demand is higher than supply. The, the wages are going up for these technical jobs. Well, let's look at database administration, quality assurance and testing, internet and e-commerce, good jobs, good salaries, all up, every single one of them, with bonuses for uh, in-demand skills down below. Oh, networking and telecom, operations, security, all good salaries, all up, every single one of them. Software development, technical services and help desk, all up. So okay, the macro economy, bad news, wah wah, it's, you know, we're upset, we're scared. But ICT is killing it, right? This field is doing great, and this is what we do. So let's stay focused on that. Let's figure out how do we do it better, because this is how we're going to pull. We're going to make this economy better. This is how we're going to get rid of that cloud that's hanging over us. We got to develop this workforce. We got to apply these technologies to make ourselves more efficient and to develop new businesses and services. So the theme of this conference is doing what matters for ICT education. What is that? Efficiently developing the ICT workforce that's needed to, to pull this economy up. That's what we're here for. That's what we need to be doing. And we should feel good about what we're doing because we're legitimately helping people. You give somebody technical skills, they will thrive in this new world. But there, there are some problems. There's some things that we can do better. So again, ICT workforce demand is strong. You know, huge number, 1.2 million in Q1 2011, already working in ICT in California. 80,000 job openings, strong uh, wages, but. We did one of these real-time labor market information studies, a snapshot of a, bear, of a uh, California economy. There were 2,300 ICT jobs posted. They had 1,900 different job titles. Even when the job titles are the same, the descriptions are different. The, the skills that are required are different. Well, how do we make sense of that? How do we figure out what employers are asking for when that's the way they express demand for workforce. It's a tough nut. So we just did a, a study recently about uh, 
enrollments and demographics in the California Community College system. And it's significant. One in four community college students in the U.S. attends the California Community College. Nobody's ever looked at the way we do ICT education across systems, across different schools. We tend to just be focused on whatever we do at our individual schools. California Community College is 5,700 faculty teaching ICT-related stuff, 679,000 ICT-related enrollments in 2010 and 11. So the community colleges are playing in this space. We, you cannot ignore community colleges if we're going to push these knowledge and skill sets out in our communities because this is the most cost-effective way to do it. And some interesting stuff in these uh, studies. You know, we have this perception that there are no women. You know, all the geeks are men. Well, 48% of credit enrollments were by women. Women had higher passing rates than men. Women got more uh, degrees. They got more certificates. But women are more concentrated in certain areas than others. They dominate health IT, 82% of enrollments library sciences, educational technology, office technologies, dominated by women. But, you know, traditional transfer computer science, uh, electronics, uh, computer infrastructure and support are, are male dominated. So it's not true that there are no women in this field, but they're not distributed uh, adequately across the breadth of ICT. Ethnicity, uh, the only way we're going to deliver the workforce that we need is if we're tapping all the different segments of our population, especially in a place like California that is so diverse. Whites are still the highest number, but that's going to tip very, very soon. Um, extraordinary diversity in terms of age. Uh, students 15 years old to students in their late 90s. Um, and this is important. 7% of the people taking ICT-related classes in community colleges already had associate degrees. 19% already had a bachelor degree or higher. They're not there to transfer to a four-year school. They're not there to get an associate degree. They're not there to get a certificate. And if that's how uh, we're judged for success, we're going to be in trouble as ICT departments. They're there to get knowledge and skills, and they're getting it. So 600,000 enrollments, 1,000 associate degrees delivered, 2,000 ICT-related certificates delivered. So let's see, 1,000 out of six. So for every 600 uh, classes taken, there's one degree offered, uh, awarded. For every 300 classes taken, there's a certificate awarded. Well, clearly, they're not there to get that degree or certificate, or they would be completing more of it, or they're incompetent. They're there to get knowledge and skills, and we need to be aware of that. It's, it's not the degree, that thing we think we're selling, the degree and certificate, that's not what we're actually selling. We're selling knowledge and skills, and let's be aware of that. So trends, you know, enrollments down, crisis, education getting cut, um, but it's not being cut intelligently in a lot of cases. Um, female enrollment decreased 3%. That's not good news. But, you know, in the very bottom here, software development, World Wide Web administration, enrollments are being cut in those areas. That makes no sense at all. That's where, the, that's where the highest job demand is in the state of California. Let's not cut it there. Let's cut it somewhere else. Let's cut that basket weaving class that doesn't lead anywhere. Let's advocate for keeping the programs that, you know, help people advance, that's going to help our economy pull forward. Uh, you know, enrollment's down 7 percent. Faculty went down 5 percent. Gender ratio basically unchanged, 45% female, 55% male. And the distributions of students in these classes reflect gender enrollment. So healthcare IT, lots of female teachers, lots of female students. 
um, electronics, lots of male students, lots of male faculty. We need to be mixing that up more if we really want to attract women into the, into the areas that they're, where they're underrepresented today. More importantly, <coughs> even after these cuts, 61% of faculty in California community colleges is white. That's not going to work in the long run. We need to be uh, attracting students from other communities. And in order to do that, they need to see role models and cultural references that they're familiar with. So we also studied the ICT-related programs and academic credentials in the community college system. So 112 colleges in uh, California, 295 different academic departments offering ICT-related stuff, 177 different names. They offer 624 different associate level degrees. They have more than 400 unique titles. 1,500 academic certificates offered. They have more than 1,100 titles. That's amazing. You know, how can you come up with that different, that many different word combinations? Um, and, and people don't know what they mean. They don't know what they represent. Um, and even more unfortunately, it creates a transfer and articulation world that's impossible. Just to articulate the different combinations between 295 different academic departments, there's 46,000 unique combinations possible. If you want to completely articulate that system, you need 46,000 articulation agreements. Well, that, that's never, ever, ever going to happen. And, you know, we've got people stranded because they're, you know, did half a program in LA, they moved to San Francisco, doesn't do them any good. We need to, to harmonize, we need to coordinate because it devalue, devalues all of our credentials if nobody knows what they are, if nobody knows what they mean. Chaos, that's our problem statement. It's just complete chaos. And it's leading to a problem, a supply and demand skills mismatch, where employers are saying, we can't find workers with appropriate skills and knowledge. That's across all different groups. Well, that is, that's broken, that's messed up. We gotta do something about that. With the level of unemployment that we have today, for employers to say they can't find the right workforce is just messed up. We've got to start growing our own geeks here at home. And most teachers that I talk to just want to know, you know, what do I teach? What is it that people want to know? And don't make me figure it out. Um, so we want to try to pull together as a community and figure out, figure this out in a in a better way. And and we have a study underway for that purpose right now. Uh, we've created a, an advisory for ICT. They've informed the methodology for a study. Uh, we're trying to get in a detailed way the foundational competencies expected by California employers for their ICT workforce, regardless of their specialized role. What is it everybody needs to be able to know and be able to do if they're going to work in the IT department? Um, and that, that study is, is underway now. They're, there are more than 200 California employers that have been engaged in it so far. We're going to get more than 600 before we're done. We want to take that information and use it to create common student learning outcomes for a core of, of ICT programs and then work with all of you to try to align our programs to those common SLOs to, to create more harmony in the system better alignment, better articulation and transfer. Uh, and we're using for that uh, the U.S. Department of Labor's uh, IT competency model. You see some of those logos you're familiar with, people produce, producing this event. Uh, this is the Career One Stop site. This is their pyramid. You've seen our pyramid in the past. We're going after these industry-wide technical competencies and the fundamental IT skills or the digital literacy component there. 
so workplace readiness, it's important, soft skills, personal effectiveness, general academic competencies, general workplace competencies, all important. We hear it, we get it. That's been validated through other careers, though. We want to dig in what people need to know from a technical standpoint. And we'd like to ask for your help. If you have relationships with California employers, uh, if you would direct them to this study, CAICTResearch.com takes about a half an hour. Uh, they can opt in to, to receive a $50 reward for it. Um, so enough of all that. We're, uh, we're here at the Winter Conference uh, at the brand new Chinatown campus here in San Francisco. It's a fabulous location for the, those of you who are visiting. Uh, we're between the Financial District, Chinatown, and North Beach. So there's all sorts of wonderful things to do within walking distance. Uh, there's 230 of you who have registered, all great people, uh, and a great group of organizations that's come together to produce this event. Uh, in addition to MPIC, there's the ICT Center from Massachusetts. Uh, Mike Cassani, are you here? Uh, the Baytech National Center from Boston, Deborah and Lou. Raise your hand if you're if you're in the room. I can't see. Uh, Cassia, John Sands, Eric couldn't make it. Uh, the CyberWatch Center, Casey's down with a back problem. Uh, CyberWatch West, Dan and Jay, new cyber center in uh, in Southern California. Convergence Technology Center, based in Texas, Ann and others. Okay, hi. Midwest Center for IT and the California Community College ICT Collaborative. We've all sort of thrown in together to try to produce this event, and there's a fabulous agenda. I don't know if you've looked at it very carefully yet. It's in your package. Looks like this. Um, a little cheating. Uh, the sessions that are orange are by representatives of ICT industry primarily, like EMC and Cisco and VMware, others. Uh, so they they're here sharing their stories and resources for improving ICT education. Uh, in purple, there's a really solid uh, ICT security track throughout the event this year. Um, so there's an opportunity to see something security related in every time session throughout the event. Uh, Tomorrow, on Friday, there's uh, a diversity-focused track, opportunities to, to learn about how to improve diversity in ICT education. Um, we got two sessions going in, in computer labs at all times, so there's their hands-on interactive opportunities. Um, and there's it's just really, really fabulous stuff. All of those sessions are going to take place in the building where you had breakfast this morning, right up on the corner. Um, and we're really pleased that all the sessions, uh, if you're a presenter, if you give us permission, all these sessions will be made available in real time over the public internet using CCC Confer. Blaine is one of the facilitators. He directs CCC Confer for the California Community College System. Um, so if you're a presenter, please try to show up 10 minutes early uh, for your presentation and work with your facilitator to get that set up. If you don't want to do it, just say so. We won't do it. Uh, they'll also be recorded and made available asynchronously so that the impact of what you do isn't just limited to those relatively few who can be in the room. If at any time you want us to take down that recording, we will for any or no reason, uh, just let us know. Sometimes there's technical difficulties associated with that. You know, it takes takes a minute to get it going. When that happens, you know, talk to each other. People routinely say that among the most valuable aspects of an event like this is the, the networking opportunities, the opportunity to, to get to know each other as subject matter experts and help each other share resources. And if you don't know what to talk about, you know, we all agree ICT education is important. You can start there. 
we're having this evening a little happy hour event because that networking works better sometimes with a little beer or wine. So in the in the same fourth floor area where we'll have lunch and there'll be coffee and, and snacks, uh, we'll also have a little beer and wine. So encourage people to hang out and get to know each other. There is an evaluation form in your packages. We'd like to really encourage you to complete those. Uh, for us to be able to, to offer an event like this, we need to be able to uh, continuously improve it, and we need your feedback for that. And we also need to be able to report about it to those that fund us. We'll trade you a raffle ticket for your completed evaluation form tomorrow. Uh, so we'll end the event with a raffle, and there's some fantastic stuff that's been donated, you know, hard drive from EMC and books and wonderful stuff. So please uh, complete your evaluation. And thank you so much for coming.